Aussie Rules is the little sport that could. Next weekend, the AFL Grand Final will be beamed into 170 countries, including for the first time into China. That's not bad going for a mongrel game born in the back streets of working class Melbourne, 150 years ago. Today, the AFL is a multi-billion dollar business with a seemingly unlimited checkbook and plenty of cheek. It's even been poaching stars from its great rival, Rugby League, and that's just the start of it. Now the sports execs are looking offshore. They're taking the Australian game to the world, and they're bringing a little bit of the world back home with them. It's a brand new day in Cape Town, South Africa. And believe it or not, this is now the brave new frontier for Aussie rules. My dream is to take that ball and go to the MCG and run like hell. Yeah. <laughs> it may be the AFL's best kept secret. 20,000 South African youngsters from vast townships like this are now playing the Australian game. 20,000. Football is, um, is a, like a dream come true to many of us, more especially to me, because... Even Australian football? Australian football, specifically. And that's why these two AFL legends have come here on a mission. There's the Big Dipper, Robert De Pier Domenico. So watch again. And Kevin, Super Coach Sheedy, the game's greatest innovator. Hey Dipper, that's why I coach and you talk. <laughs> we, we unite people and that's why we're here. We should be ambassadors for the United Nations. <laughs> we'll come and talk to the United Nations. We'll bring it's, peace to the world. I've seen it happen through my own game. middle name Kissinger. I am it? going to cry now. I've got to move now. <laughs> so, it's the greatest game on earth. It's the greatest game on earth, isn't it? It hey? is, it is. We are the greatest game on earth. That's what I want to say about it. One, come on. Come on. <laughs> like a couple of jocular missionaries, they crusade the world, spreading the gospel of drop punts and handballs. Come on, get up, get up! We, we see a land of opportunity here for kids who don't have an opportunity. And that's where you're going to kick the ball. So what are you looking for? Agility and uh, ball handling. OK, here we go. Come on, run out, run out, come on! And how many would you realistically expect to get from South Africa? Uh, at the moment, I would be disappointed if we can get 10 players out of South Africa in the next 10 years. And that's been very conservative. Get it right, will ya? Get that, you'll have to hear his own voice. I mean, really. He's 60, he's still coaching, my God. Try to get it about a metre from the goal. Now, you were telling me you've never played sport before. I never played sport before. I used to play chess. Chess? <laughs> wow, big chess player, look at that. <laughs> so why Aussie rules? As you said, it's unique. It's a nice sport. It's fast. I like fast. I like fast things, really. This kid has talent, I know where it comes from, Mum! Kevin Sheedy is both dreamer and dream maker. His first ever South African recruit is 20-year-old Bayanda Sabetwa. Bayanda's off to play for Sheed's new team, Greater Western Sydney, which kicks off in 2012. Just to make $200 million and come back and spend it in brands. $200 million. Yeah, there'll be a lot of money to me. <laughs> 200 million or 200,000, it barely matters. For a kid who built his own bedroom out the back of rusty corrugated iron and building scraps. It's his tiny, private AFL shrine. And you dream of winning a grand final at the Melbourne Cricket Ground? Oh, if I can just, uh, well, not only dreaming about winning the grand final, if I can just step a foot and play uh, like 20 minutes, 20 minute game in an MCG, that would be the biggest day of my life. For a hundred years or so, international recruitment meant the back streets of Melbourne, grabbing Greeks and Yugoslavs and Italians like Roberto Di Domenico. I remember coming home from school one day, about 16 and a half years of age I was at the time, and Dad said, uh, you now play for Hawthorne. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you now play for Hawthorne. This is Bob and this is Trevor. He's from Hawthorne Football Club. I sold you today. How <laughs> much? Ten thousand dollars. You're worth ten thousand bucks. That's all. They fix your teeth and they pay for school forever. A very good deal, huh? And the rest is history. And the rest is history. Eighteen years of my life spent at that club. Okay, I want you to feel on the ball. 
Right, you feeling it? But to find kids like Dipper today, to play in Hawthorne colours, the AFL has gone global, thanks to international recruitment managers like Ricky Nixon. Now there, it's nearly right. Armed with computers, little cameras and big checkbooks. Yeah, that's your best kit. Why do you need to go offshore for players? The pool isn't bottomless at uh, the end of the day in Australia and uh, you need to look at talent that's elsewhere and people from overseas bring different sort of skill sets and different dimensions to our game. But you don't think you're offering these kids an impossible dream? I'm offering them a very difficult dream, but that's made very clear to them, but it's, it's not impossible. And so the Aussie recruiters are targeting Ireland. They're going back to the very roots of the Aussie game. Every winter Saturday morn, across all of the counties, from the youngest to the toughest, they turn out religiously for the national passion called Gaelic football. I'll get 30 or 40,000 screaming fans here in Kalani every Sunday, and half a million right around the country. This is the last bastion of amateur sport, maybe anywhere in the world. None of these players here get paid. It's part of the Irish culture. But now a bunch of Australians are coming with a fistful of dollars and they're trying to pick off the best of their players. I spoke to Ricky this morning, so he's already happy with how he's are doing. Ricky Nixon has a full-time agent in Dublin named Sean, of course. And he's penciled contracts with the cream of the Irish crop. These three elite players are hot to trot to Australia. Very good challenge. Just a, maybe a chance to try something out professionally and try sport out professionally, you know, it'll be something that'll be very attractive to a lot of people here in Ireland. Sometimes GA players are being poached by Australian rules. They're also picking them all, up all over South Africa. Big ages with big money, luring the poor and the amateurs. But the AFL's international blitz has got Dublin's top-rating radio jock, Tommy McGuirk, as mad as hell, in a lilting Irish sort of way. I'll be giving them a piece of my mind. Uh, we get a couple of second-hand car salesmen arriving in uh, with big checkbooks and not providing too many answers. There's, there's more to life than earning money playing Australian football. So into this Irish culture come the Aussies raping and plundering. I think I've got a pretty good handle on how professional sport works. And I don't like these guys being taken in the way they've been taken. But the agent arrives in here, he asks around, he picks them up. I mean, it's what is this? Some elaborate form of people trafficking, you know. I get some interesting me emails at time. We'll stab you to death if you come over here again. But I oh, do you really? Too, I haven't seen too many knives yet. But you're a sporting pirate, wandering um, their riches. Their well, I suppose you know, it, probably at the end of the day you are really, aren't you? I mean, at the end of the day you are a sporting pirate. But uh, the world's had pirates since day dot, haven't they? And the latest Irish treasure that Nixon has plundered is 21-year-old rawbone Tommy Walsh, the most highly prized footballer in all of the counties. Tommy's joined Nixon's own old club, St Kilda. You know, the guys are fitter, they are faster, they're much stronger. I suppose I've lost, I've lost about five, five kgs. Tommy's happy here with his beautiful Irish girlfriend and with dreams of cracking the big time. This is part of the incentive, the fact that if you can make it, this can be your life, this can also probably set you up for forever. That's it, yeah, like, you know, it's not, it's not going to make you, like, a millionaire, but, like, it, it can certainly give you a good start in life, and, and that's, that's definitely an incentive for coming out, especially with the way, the way things are at home. The economy is very poor at the moment, so it was, um, you know, that was a huge attraction to come out here. But if you're looking for footy recruits, well, there's Ireland, and there are islands, like the Tiwi Islands. This hothouse yeah. in Australia's deep north has become the natural breeding ground for Aussie rules stars. I just couldn't believe how good they played. And I just couldn't believe the freakish skills they had. I, I mean, I never met any in Chapel Street, South Area, where I grew up. The game today is exactly what they've been playing for the last sort of 100 years. The funny thing is that Kevin Sheedy held the very first coaching clinic with skinny leg kids here almost 40 years ago. Everybody, one, two, three, go! And he changed the face of football forever. Yay! The biggest risk in life is not to take a risk. So That's, is that part of what you're doing? Is oh, absolutely. It's always been part of my life. Experiment, see what happens. Absolutely. No doubt about that. <laughs> Today, Dipper runs the Auskick program from the Tiwi Islands down to Tasmania, right across Indigenous Australia. It's a tough life, but somebody's got to do it. 
I tell you what, if we were having a competition, <laughs> you just got me, I think. But that is a ripper. There's always a football around here somewhere, you know, and they keep them out of trouble. And the thing about uh, the football for this community, it, it gives them a pathway, a pathway to education and sport and keeping healthy because of a footy. Ready, set. There were no miss, Indigenous miss. players at Richmond or at Hawthorne when Sheeds and Dipper started. Not one. Wow, he's 10 years of age and played in the under 14. Put your hands together for Patrick. <laughs> and Michael Long and I want to know, have you got a manager? Because we're going to see you play on the MCG, yeah? And what team are you going to play for? Bombers. Bombers? <laughs> Today, one in every six players in the AFL is Indigenous. Names like Michael Long and Adam Goods and Nicky Winmar and all the others with their scary talents who've revolutionised the game. We take them away from drugs, we take them away from, from drinking. I mean, the time they wake up in the morning, they've got a plastic ball in their hand, if not a football in the other hand, and they're kicking the ball around, they're kicking the plastic ball around. You say part of the culture, it's also part of the incentive for education to get oh. kids to school. Yeah, that's the carrot. Yeah, I mean, they have an opportunity to go to a school, if they go to school, they're allowed to go football training. Who votes for the best team ever? The Mighty Hawks! <laughs> now, it's the success of this Indigenous program yep. that the AFL is hoping to emulate right yep. around the world. Oh, well done, well done. But you don't really think it's going to match soccer or rugby even around the world? Oh, yes! It'll match any code, and probably better, because we've got rock and roll this game. This is the best footy game in the world. It's been our fault that we actually haven't sold it to the world. It's not the world's fault. I mean, the biggest thing about um, you know, European immigration is they took soccer with them. The only thing soccer can't beat is AFL. So from Tiwi Island sunrises to Kailisha's dusty back alleys and Kalani's green, green fields, the cashed up AFL is unstoppable in its hunt for untapped talent. And with zealots like Dipper and Kevin Sheedy, nobody so it seems is safe. Not rugby league superstars, nor Afghan boat people. The super coach wants the lot of them. I'd have another 10 million people come to the country, so I'm the wrong person to be in politics. So a few boat people don't worry you? Mate, I'd just be saying, look, we'll have him and we'll have him. Uh, he's a soccer, we'll take him for AFL. I'll be the wrong person out there in Christmas Island. Bayanda, welcome to Australia, mate, and Team GWS. 20-year-old Bayanda, the impossible dreamer from Cape Town, has crossed the ocean, and he's kicked his first drop punt towards glory. He's leading the charge for a new breed of international footballer. That's if Kevin Sheedy gets his way, as he usually does. Just dream for a, for a moment. That's all I ever do. How long is it going to be before we see one of these tall kids from China or South Africa or... India, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or Argentina. Or, or Lebanon, yeah, of course. Run out here on the MCG. It's going to happen, so I hope you and I are alive, mate, to see it. Because we'll, we'll sit up here like, you know, those two little doozies in uh, the Muppet Show and say, oh, we told you this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> are you listening? If from Tiwi Islands, County Cork, Cape Town, Tasmania, Anywhere in this world, we want you to play our game. Do you know why, Ray? It's the greatest <laughs> game on earth. How many times do I have to tell you? I'll see you at the MCG. <laughs>